Hi, my name is Mackenzie Drevet, and today we're going to be talking about cholesterol. And before we talk about cholesterol, what is cholesterol? Cholesterol is a kilomicron, which is a type of lipoprotein. And lipoproteins are transport vehicles for fats. So it doesn't matter what kind of cholesterol you're talking about, it's all transporting the same fat. It just determines where the fat is going and what its purpose is. There's many kinds of cholesterol, but the main two kinds we're going to focus on is LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol, and HDL cholesterol, which is the good cholesterol. Now, HDL cholesterol takes fat away from the arteries and delivers it to the liver where it can then be recycled or it can be expelled from the body. LDL cholesterol, why it's called bad cholesterol, takes fat and delivers it to the arteries. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing because its purpose for doing so is to help to rebuild the cells and rebuild the cell walls. So it, it, is, it is a necessary thing that our bodies have LDL cholesterol. The issue is when our LDL levels are too high, it is transporting more fats to the cells and the arteries than is necessary. And then that can cause a buildup of plaque. It can cause um, blood clots. And then if those blood clots break free and clog an artery that is going to either the brain or the heart, you can get a stroke or a heart attack. So that is why LDL is known as the bad cholesterol. So we need to make sure that our cholesterol is in balance because you need some LDL and you need some HDL, but you want your body to be determining those levels. So how can we make sure that we're not increasing our LDL too high and that we're actually helping our body to lower those levels? Well, some of the things that contribute to high LDL cholesterol levels is animal products like meat, dairy, eggs, fast foods, and highly refined foods. All these contribute to high levels of LDL. Also being overweight contributes to LDL because it reduces the body's ability to remove excess LDL from the bloodstream. Inactivity can increase LDL levels and also different pharmaceutical drugs can increase LDL levels. Things like cardiovascular drugs, which you would think would help the heart, but it actually increases your LDL levels. Steroids, whether it's anabolic or uh, corticosteroids, those can both increase your LDL levels. Other drugs are immunosuppressants, and there's many other drugs that can also contribute to high levels of LDL cholesterol. So what are some of the ways that we can increase our HDL cholesterol to make sure that we're removing that excess fat from the arteries? Some of those things are the naturally occurring fats like olive oil. Olive oil is a great form of fat that contributes to higher HDL cholesterol levels. We want to make sure that our oils are cold pressed because if they're heat extracted, that actually changes the structure of the oil. So we want to make sure it's cold pressed and then we're getting all the benefits there. A great oil is coconut oil. Coconut oil can actually help to increase your metabolic rate. So if you're having a slow metabolism and you're having issues with making sure that you're getting enough calories in and utilizing all those calories, coconut oil can help with that. Another thing that coconut oil is great for is brain health. The brain is about 60% fat and needs fat to function properly. And there's been studies done to show that two tablespoons and higher of coconut oil taken each day can actually reverse Alzheimer's. So it is a very good fat to be adding into your diet. So any of the naturally occurring plant-based fats are going to increase your HDL and therefore lower your LDL cholesterol levels. Now we need to remember that fats are very important for proper body function, just like we mentioned the brain. It needs fats in order to function properly. There's many things that use fats in order to have proper function. So we need to be eating fats. We just need to make sure that the fats we're eating are going to be helping our body and not hindering our body. And we have to remember also 
that if we're thinking by eating fats, we're going to gain fat, we talked in counting calories how fat is not the leading contributor, but is actually the insulin spikes that is causing us to gain fat. Now, we're talking about naturally occurring fats. We're not talking about highly processed fats. If you're talking about highly processed fats, like deep fried foods or highly refined foods, those things are going to cause an insulin spike and they're high in highly refined fats, which will increase the body's fat composition. But if we're talking natural fats that the body can utilize to function properly, they're very necessary in keeping a healthy mind and a healthy body. So I hope this video helped you to understand your body a little bit better and how it functions. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.